Hey guys, welcome to BP the Bible Perspective. Can you ask God for anything and receive anything you ask for according to certain prayer promises in Scripture? There are people teaching it. So let's get into that. Now, before I do, please like and share this video and subscribe to BP the Bible Perspective. And as always, if you have a thought or comment, add it to the comment section below. All comments are welcome. Now, I've been a Christian for over 40 years, and I can tell you that there are several verses of scripture that people teach this. There are concepts, ideologies, and theologies built upon that you can ask whatever you want from God, and he will give it to you. In fact, there is a popular prayer book or book of faith, books on faith, I should say, that teaches the very thing. In fact, one original book was How to Write Your Own Ticket with God. Now, a couple other people came after that and kind of modified the book and said, five guaranteed, guaranteed answers to prayer. You do these things and guaranteed. Now, I'm not going to get off, of course, off into the, 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 the teaching of that because, well, I don't have to. It doesn't work. But, okay, let me share with you some of the verses they use so that you can know what I mean. And I think some of you do. Um, look at this verse here. This is in um, uh, John chapter 16. I want to just look at verse 23. It says, In that day you will ask me anything. I assure you, anything, now look at the word there, anything you ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you until now. You have not, until now, you have asked for nothing in my name. Ask, and you will receive, so that your joy may be full. Here's another one. And this one is in Mark 11. And I'm going to just read verse 24. Therefore, I tell you, all things you pray, ask for. Believe, and you will receive them, and you will have them. Now, think about that. All things. Here's another one. This is in 1 John uh, chapter 5. He says, now, this is the confidence we have before him. Whatever we ask anything according to his will he hears us and if we know that he hears us whatever we ask we know that we have what we have asked for him now there are other verses of scripture and other what people will call principles of faith and using those scriptures now if you want to say god i'm going to hold you to that i can ask anything well, let's just let's just be facetious for a moment, because anything does mean anything, does it not? Well, can I then ask God for Australia? How about His throne? Right? They may think, because anything is anything, and certainly throne fall God's throne falls in that category. I'll keep it in the earth. James and John and their mother tried to get the jump on everybody. And, and this is found in the Gospels. They came to Jesus. One of the stories, this is Mark chapter 10. And I forget what the other two. But you can find this story throughout. They came and the mother came and said, Jesus, we want you to do whatever we ask of you. Now, it's funny that Jesus didn't say, sure. I just gave you the promises, right? No. He said, what do you want from me? And he says, look, that you put my boys, you know, Jimmy and Johnny, on your right hand and on your left hand in your kingdom. You know, she was referring to the earthly messianic kingdom. And he kind of rebuked them for that, saying, you don't know what you're asking. Here's my point. Anything is anything, though, isn't it? You see, the problem is that... that no, he did not mean that. There was another man who Jesus cast out a legion worth of demons. That's like about 6,000 demons. And that man begged Jesus. Begged him. Jesus, let me be with you. So how do we balance that? Right? Let me give you one more. This is the Apostle Paul. And I'm going to bring this scripture up here. This is the Apostle Paul. 
he had a thorn in the flesh. Now, a thorn in the flesh meant, um, uh, well, let me just read the verse here. First, I'm going to start reading verse 7. He says, especially because of the extra, extraordinary revelations. There, therefore, so that I would not exalt myself, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan to torment me, so that I would not exalt myself. Concerning this, I pleaded with the Lord three times to take it away from me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. For power is perfected in you. Now, I'm just going to read, just stop there, because I want you to go, it's a fascinating passage of scripture. The reason why I'm going to stop there, the, the point what Paul was making was, he asked the Lord three times to remove the thorn, and God did not grant that. What God did do was say, hey, here is the answer you need, and that is, my grace is sufficient for you. Now, my point is that, when people ask or teach that you can get anything, that's just misleading people and giving people false hope. Because especially, as I mentioned before in another video, I said, look, if when your loved one gets sick, or even you yourself, you know, are facing a terminal disease, and what happens when you don't get that prayer answered? How many people have died? People have prayed, right? Think about the election, this past election. Think about the prayers offered and their prayers didn't get answered. Why? Because oftentimes we're not really understanding the context in which something is given. Now, let me put it this way. When Jesus said anything, and if you say, I want Jesus, I want you to I want to hold you to that because you did say anything. Well, then Jesus might say this. Well, I'm going to hold you literally to what I said when I said this, that if your eye offends you, gorge it out. If your hand offends you, cut it off. If your feet <laughs> offend you, cut them off. Right? Because he went on to say it's better to enter into life, maim, blind, lame, then they have your eyes, hands, and feet, and go to hell. Oh, well, today I've yet to see anyone to actually do that. If, but the better thing is that Jesus literally mean to cut the hands off. We have no problems with understanding. Oh no, Jesus didn't mean that. You see, the idea is that in the language of the day, we speak sometimes in these hyperboles and things like that. Like when your mother says, "I'm going to knock you into tomorrow." I remember one time my oldest sister got in trouble once because my my mother was like, bring your behind in here. And she kind of came in behind first. And she was like, oh, you've been a smart aleck, huh? Uh, and she found out, okay, you want to take me literally? Then, and she, you know, I think my mother probably knocked her side of her head or something like that. Anyway, but the idea is that we speak and we understand what they mean. They're the context and Jesus was saying to his disciples, whatever you ask, here's the thing, you're going to go into the world and preach the gospel. In that context, whatever you ask, I will give it to you. He, he's not, when Paul asked, hey, I'm in the world preaching the gospel, but hey, take this persecution away because that's what thorns in the flesh mean, by the way. Take this, take this away. And Jesus didn't answer him. See, the idea is this, understand the context. Think about it this way. If a, 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 think of a CEO who hires an administrator and he said to the administrator, hey, I want you to run the office, run everything. You're, you're responsible for payroll. You're responsible for ordering supplies. You're, you're responsible for every aspect of the office to run. Then he takes, a, uh, takes the administrator to the office and says, this is your office. And then he says, hey, anything you want, let me know. What well, does, does that administrator sit down and get out the, uh, the you know, the luxury lots uh, yacht magazine and order a, a 200 foot yacht? No, because they would get fired if they were to do that. Now, on the other hand, they may pray and, and not pray, but they may order. They may say, "I need new office furniture." First, may say, "Fine." They may say, "I need, I may need, need system upgrades." 
Let me say fine. In other words, there's a context to what is said. And there's a context of what God says about those prayer promises as well. And part of the promise is that, yes, God will meet our needs. God will heal us. God will do things that he has promised. But at the same time, guess what? Persecution and things like that? Oh, we're going to suffer those too. So the idea is that keep in context what he means when he says that. Look, that's my perspective. And don't forget to like and share this video and subscribe to BP The Bible Perspective. Until next time, I'll see you then.